what I want to do is give you a sense of what is what I do. Uh, why should why should this be something that would persuade you that Echoing Green is a force for social change? Um, and let me just start by giving a, a snapshot. I don't know if uh, many of you have heard of the Freelancers Union, but it's a new kind of organization. It's a new form of unionism for people who work independently. And by that, it's people who don't work for one employer, people who are graphic artists or web programmers, people who are home health care aides. And it crosses the whole economic spectrum. But what is so significant is when you think about the way that we all work, you think that we tend to think of the regulatory system that, fund, that, that surrounds the way people work as being longer term, that people would have a job for, let's say, 25 years, they'd stay in that job. We know intuitively that that does, doesn't make sense, but actually the way that we deliver health insurance, retirement, the whole New Deal safety net actually depends on that old model of having one job for a long period of time. So now, actually, a third of the workforce works independently. 18% are part-time, 10% are independent contractors, 2 plus per percent are uh, contract workers or temps. So you'd think, well, if we have this whole new way of working, and so many people are working in it across the economic spectrum, that we would just you know, simply adapt. But as you look at almost all social change, what it needs is to have a way to bring groups together to start talking about what it is that they need. And so for me, that was the realization that we had this labor movement that wasn't in sync with the way this new workforce was. And therefore, we have to start thinking about how are we going to solve these new problems. So let me just digress for one second and just give a sense of, and uh, Cheryl sort of mentioned this a bit, you know, the funny thing is my grandfather was the vice president of the International Ladies Garment Workers Union. My father was a labor lawyer. My mother was in the teachers union. My, my husband is a union side labor lawyer. My daughter was born on Sam Gompers, the founder of the <laughs> AFL-CIO's <laughs> birthday. <laughs> and so in my house, the word entrepreneur was kind of like a bad word. You know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so when I started on this journey, I didn't know of Echo and Green in the very beginning because I didn't really know what this journey was going to be. I actually went off to the Kennedy School to try and start understanding what was going to be this new way. And the last thing I thought was that I was going to be like an entrepreneur. But when I started to try and understand, like, what, what, what is a union? What is a union? Not what is the AFL-CIO, but what is the essence of it? It's actually got two core components. One is it brings people together to solve problems. And two, it has a business model. And the reason I say it has a business model is that any trade union anywhere in the world that is supported by the government is not a real union. And if it's supported by business, it's not an independent actor within a democracy. So once you start thinking about this coming together and solving problems, and this business model, you start violating all the typical tenets of what you're supposed to do. And so when I started trying to build this organization and going to the typical uh, people that you'd go to to raise money and say, well, it's about uplift, it's about a business model, it's about people who don't work for a traditional employer, it was very hard to find anybody who actually wanted to fund this. And so when I found this group called Echo and Green, where people said, that sounds like a great idea. That sounds really interesting. And then you'd meet people like Mobuto and others who, Mabuso, who, who all had these really incredible ideas. And more than just having incredibly, incredible ideas, they actually had a vision and a plan. They're what I think many of us think of as realistic idealists. They're people who, when you talk to them, they know every single thing about their field. When you meet them and you ask them about um, microfinance or education, they'll go toe for toe with anybody in the for-profit sector because they know their stuff because they have to know their stuff to be effective. And they have to figure out what their business model is going to be. And Echo and Green creates that kind of community. 
So now back to this idea of what we did. So for the Freelancers Union, we now have 93,000 members nationally. In New York, we provide health insurance to 19,000 people. We have created a new portable benefit system that surrounds the individual as people go from job to job and project to project. As we are faced with a society of 46 million people who are uninsured, and we have Massachusetts, their connector as a model, the federal employee health plan as a model, the idea of vouchers or other kinds of um, funding as models, What's emerging is that we don't have a structure in place for people who are so mobile and how do we bring them together to get the benefits. So the Freelancers Union has emerged as one of the most important models of showing how you can have something, whether it's funded through vouchers or whether it would be funded through a universal government financing system that would enable this kind of portability. And so because of the potential of the model, we've been able to raise $17 million to start the freelancers insurance company. And the $17 million, and I know a lot of people are going to be jealous when I tell you about our rates of return. We um, got loans and are returning 2% positive. Um, <laughs> our biggest investor um, got 5%. And at the time, that seemed bad. But now, hey, we're looking great. And, um, <laughs> and the freelancers insurance company, right now our gross revenues are actually $70 million. And after five years, we're projecting to have gross revenues of $200 million. So what will be success for us? Let me just say, there are no shareholders. The owner is the freelancers union. No one's going to build another McMansion because we did well. No more bad architecture. <laughs> um, but, um, but what we will be able to do is to put that into research and development. We'll be able to put that into educational programs, into our advocacy. And it's not just about getting the benefits that our members need, which is, of course, crucial and, of course, the central thing of what I do in my day, during my day, but, but it's also about pioneering the next safety net that so much about innovation is about making sure you're listening to the right customer base. Because you don't have to be so brilliant. You have to be listening to the right group. So I'm here to say that I completely love Echo and Green. Echo and Green, for me, uh, I, I, I say this all the time, and it's so completely true. It's a very lonely time when you have a vision, and you have an idea, and you really have an idea of how it just might work, but you just can't find the support that you need. And so whenever Echo and Green asks me to come to anything, I say yes. In my own little bitty way of philanthropy, I give. And I have to say, I think that this is the best investment because as you hear about these wonderful fellows, they are just so inspiring. So not only can you feel like you've given to something, but you can just feel so proud that you've built so much here and be part of a community that really is all about love. So let me say um, thank you so much, and I look forward to chatting with you after.